All physiological systems depend on a constant supply of energy in order to work. All physiological processes in the body need to be powered by some form of energy. And the way that cells produce energy is using a molecule which is energy rich called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And it converts this to another molecule called adenosine diphosphate. And when it does so, energy is released. Now, this way of using energy, this energy currency that cells use, is common to all forms of life. So crocodiles use it, dogs use it, plants use the same system, mushrooms, even bacteria, all use this ATP, ADP system. So let's look at this briefly here. So adenosine triphosphate is ATP. Adenosine diphosphate is ADP. And the phosphate units, of which this contains three and this contains two, are the PO4 three minus ion. They are the phosphate units. And there is a molecular adenosine unit as well. So what happens inside the cell is there is some ADP and a phosphate unit is added to this ADP by the input of energy. Energy must be put in. And this forms ATP and water. And this works under the influence of the enzyme called ATP synthase. The enzyme which synthesizes ATP. And of course, oxygen is required in the production of this energy. So to produce ATP on an ongoing basis, oxygen is required. Now when the cell wants to use some energy, the AT P molecule is storing this energy. This is an energy rich molecule now. And if this is recombined with water, then the energy can be released. And what happens is ADP is restored, the phosphate unit is liberated, and of course the energy is released. And this energy can then power physiological processes. Without this energy, there is no ongoing physiology in the cell. There is no physiology, and in fact a reasonable definition of death is the absence of physiology. So this is, energy is absolutely essential for ongoing physiological life-giving processes. And the oxygen is absolutely essential to produce the energy on an ongoing basis to make the ATP. So the way we can think about this is here is a, an adenosine unit, a molecular unit, diagrammatically. An ADP, adenosine diphosphate, will contain two phosphate units. With the input of energy, a bond is formed between the third phosphate unit and the adenosine unit. So energy is put in to form this bond. This is the energy-rich bond. And then when the energy is going to be used, this phosphate group is given up, is liberated. You're left with the ADP and the individual phosphate unit. And crucially, the energy which, which was in this bond, the energy-rich bond, gives up its energy. And that energy then does the useful physiological work.